What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. So in today's video, last video I did, I basically gave some pre-production tips on some things that I've worked out myself over the years, and I shared them. I got a lot of positive feedback on that video, both in the comments of the YouTube uh, section and people reaching out to me directly. So what I thought I would do is just kind of a, a continuation of that, but not repeating that, talking about the next steps. So we're going to take a look at a different song as well, because we already focused on another song in last week's video. So here we have another session. As, as you can see, I've prepared it pretty much the exact same way where I've laid out arranger blocks, chord track, I had the scratch tracks in place, and I've laid out some markers. The main difference here, let me do a data zoom so we can see these waveforms a little bit better, is that this is after the next step. So this is after I've done a tracking session uh, from the pre-production session. So the idea was I sent the pre-production stuff out to all of the session musicians who were going to be part of this. That was a percussionist and a guitarist. And then they had an opportunity to basically hear the chord progressions and the tempo and the basic arrangements. And then we went into the tracking session. Now, we actually did a ton of material in two back-to-back -back days, and I just picked one random song. The reason I picked this one is because it has a drum kit, and there's a little bit more stuff to show. So the session that we are looking at now is exactly as I left it, pretty much after I had done the tracking session and I did some basic editing while I was there, just to make sure that I had everything I need before we kind of called it a day and packed up the drums and tear down all the mics and everything like that. So if we have a listen to this, in fact, let me just temporarily bring back in my scratch track. So these are, let's put in, where is it here? I also want to listen to my chord track. So this one over here would be an example of what was given to me. So there's our chord track. Let's take the chord preview out. Okay, so that's pretty much all I had in just these different chord progressions. And then from that, we basically generated the whole entire song. So let's pick it up from here, actually. What I would do if I was doing this and preparing it for this next step is I would start going through and double checking my edits because I did these on the fly and I want to make sure that everything is kosher. Let's have a quick listen. And one thing I want to point out here, this is important. I don't have pretty much any plugins on here except for this rhythm guitar because I needed to do something to sit it in the mix a little bit better. I've got a VU meter that, that's still from when I was tracking the drums, so let's collapse that. I've got auto align set up on these drum tracks to basically optimize the phase between them. I'm not going to get into that now, but I'm definitely going to cover that in a different video. Other than this EQ on the guitar and this compressor, in fact, let me just... Let's find a spot where this is shown and we can kind of see what these are doing and why I put these in place, even though we're so early on in the tracking stage. Okay. First of all, the EQ. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but there's a wonkiness at around 916 that I pulled out a little bit. And also I gave a low cut because we don't need all that information. And then I just have a basic compressor that I put in and that happens. Really, it's just kind of to catch some of these peaks over here maybe. So you see there. And both of these together. So that guitar doesn't need that much low end and body. So I've just put that in place and I'm probably, this is probably gonna make it all the way to the final. I'll just keep that in place. Now, another thing worth pointing out, let me just hide my automation for a second. I'm gonna just select all the events and let's go to audio and let's remove these chords. I don't need to see them right now. I actually tracked this guitar and the cajon. These were tracked together. So over here, just suspend my groups for a moment. I would double check now that I have the moment to do this in isolation. And sometimes what happens is you do a tracking session, you won't realize that you've set your preamp level too hard and you, maybe you've overcooked something. So I will double check things like that. And then the next thing I'll do is I'm going to check all my edits. So I do these on the fly as we do a punch in, I will just 
do the edits and make sure that everything is okay. They all look to be pretty good so far. And basically I'm looking for this. I just want to make sure that this is pulled back and that this has enough um, information on the front end so that I'm not cutting off any transients or anything like that. So it looks like I've done a pretty good job here. Let me just undo that. The next thing I'll do, maybe I could add some fade outs here. Or hold on, maybe this is part of an audio part. Yeah, this is part of an audio part. Okay, so this is a great example of when I'm copying and pasting stuff and I've done a lot of edits that a lot of the time I'll, I will just temporarily create an audio part. So underneath, this is what's sitting there. So I just want to make sure that all of these edits are good. So we'll just zoom in here. We'll have a listen to this. Okay, what I might do here, let's just peel this back. And I'm going to temporarily um, turn these, or sorry, disable the audio part. And I'm just going to pull this out to about here, and I'll just add a fade in. Okay, now let me go to the end here. Okay, so this looks good. Now this is another section over here, and I'm going to temporarily uh, show my edits again. And I'm doing that by going, where is it here? Audio part. We can merge to audio part. And then we have an option. Once we merge it to audio part, we have another option to dissolve the audio part. And I've got a shortcut mapped out to do that. So whenever I have something that's cut in a downbeat on the front end, I will always come in and make sure that I've pulled this back. Now this is pretty good. For example, the artist was pretty bang on here in terms of his timing, so that doesn't look too bad. But I will pull it back and make sure that I give them their natural sustain. And I'm just looking for anything that kind of stands out. Okay, so this over here. Okay, so there's a reason I pulled that back was because this take was different and I needed the bottom one to match the top one. We'll make sure that's transparent. Okay, so maybe I'll just extend that out. So little things like this where I'm just cleaning up these edits and I'm making sure that everything is good. Now, this track has drums in it. I really love tracking drums. And the interesting thing about this project is I had a certain budget and there was literally no room for any flexibility. So I had the choice to either go to the studio and work with whatever drummer I could get at a certain budget or something I haven't done in a very long time, actually, maybe like 10 years, is I said to myself, okay, I would rather hire the best percussionist and drummer that, that I know, and I would rather bring him in here and record in my living room and give that a shot because I'm pretty sure that I can make it work and grab a great performance in my living room as opposed to going to a studio and spending the money and maybe not being able to afford the same caliber of musician. So that's what I ended up doing here. So these drum tracks, we'll, we'll solo them out. Let me go like this. These were recorded in my living room. So one thing, I'm just checking the drums. Okay, that's pretty good. Okay, so this has a little bit too much bottom in it, so I'm gonna just grab an EQ and... Okay, so we'll filter that out. Perfect, now let me just temporarily disable this group and I wanna make sure that my toms are... I'm gonna do a data zoom. I wanna make sure that my toms are relatively balanced, so I'm just looking at this section over here where we've got this little... I love toms so much that I always make them too loud. Okay, so that sounds pretty good to me. And like I said, the only other thing I've done here is I have phase aligned these using auto align, so I've just optimized the phase. Um, I think what I might also do here, these sound a little thick. Let's listen to this. Keep in mind we have lots of stuff happening in addition, we've got a cajon. Uh, I'm gonna trim these down a little bit. So let's go to our main guitar track and I've got a macro that just allows me to pull up an EQ really quickly. So. Okay, that's a good move. We'll just do that. And I'm gonna copy this over to the second one. They're pretty much 
similar. I think I may have swapped out and asked him to use a different guitar, or I may have just double tracked it. I can't remember. But this is all I'm doing here to get this track ready um, to go to the next stage. So what's happening with this is once I've got all my edits in place and I'm happy with everything, I need to send out some stems. I could send out either a mix down or a set of stems. Now, I'm going to be outsourcing the bass to a bass player who lives in Spain for this track, and he records remotely. Uh, he's an amazing bass player. I worked with him on a, a previous record. So I'm going to be using this guy, and he was also used on this last record that I just finished up. This is a record that I just finished uh, for an artist by the name of Benjamin Barilli. I produced, engineered, and mixed this. And we use the same bass player. And I absolutely love working in this genre. I'll give you a quick play. So that is similar genre in terms of what I'm doing here, but that's an idea of what this will sound like later on down the line. Once it's fully produced and edited and mixed and I've done any overdubs that need to be done, maybe add some strings or some keyboards or something like that. But essentially, I need to prepare this session now to go out to Sergio. At a minimum, I would send him something like a, a WAV file, 24-bit, 96K. That's what I'm working at for this session. I'll show you over here. We are at 24-bit, 96K, and then obviously the BPM and the time signature are down here, and the key is G minor. But sometimes what I'll do for people is I would actually export or render a set of stems for them as opposed to just exporting a two mix. Now, one thing I want to mention is because of the way that I track, which is very conservative, I have a limiter on here where I'm just pushing this 6 dB in this particular section. So if we listen to, let's listen to a louder phrase over here. <laughs> Got some automation too on this track. Okay, I'm just gonna make a small change here. I think what I might do, this automation that I've added, I might just select these two nodes and uh, shift option and up arrow to move it down in a point or move it up or down in 0.6 dB. And then I'm gonna go to the next node and I wanna move that up as well. I think I went a little too far. But ideally what I'd like to do is render him a set of stems in grouped pairs. So what I'm going to do next is let's select one of these tracks. Uh, option, command on a Mac, left arrow will collapse all of your tracks if you have this little window flap open to uh, on multiple tracks. So what I'm gonna do is, these are all being routed to the main outs now, so it's nice and simple. I'm just going to select these, and I can either right click and add bus for selected channels. I've also got a shortcut to do that. And I'm going to name these exactly what they are. So this will be guitars, and I'm going to give him, this is gonna be Cajon, I'm going to give him a separate stem for each set of these elements. And then this one over here will be drums. Okay, now everything is going out of a master, out of my main outs and it's going through a limiter, but when we export stems, it will be exporting directly from the bus, so I don't have to worry about this limiter. So the next step is I wanna prepare the stems. I need to make sure that my range, in terms of my cycle range, is proper. And let's have one quick listen to the ending because I wanna make sure that I didn't prematurely cut anything off. So let me just open up this track and let's play from here. Okay, perfect. 
uh, that's going to work for me. And what I'll do is I'm going to pull out this to, let's just pull it out to the length of the longest region, which is butting up against here. So now we have the full duration of the track. Let me do a data zoom to bring my waveforms down. And what I'm going to do is use the export stems option. So that is in song and export stems. It will automatically have the song name, which is nice. And now I can just alt or option click to deselect them all. And in this case, I just want to export guitars, cajon, and drums. These are the three elements that I want to give him. Uh, I'm going to leave the file name prefix for G minor song. In fact, what I might also do is add the time signature and the BPM. So I'm going to say 66 BPM. I want this to be in the actual file names. And then I can say dash three underscore four. And that should be good enough for him to have all the information in the file name. So he could actually set up his DAW session because I know that he tracks in Logic Pro. Now I'm going to go between the loop. I'm not going to import into track. Um, let's write the tempo to audio files because his DAW may actually be able to make use of that. And once I'm ready here, the last thing is I want him to work or I want to export this and I'm going to ask him to work at the same format as me, which is 24 bit 96 K and we're in wave file. So with these three stems selected, we've added the file name prefix. We've gone between the loop and we're writing the info to tempo track. Let us generate this export. Now this is going to happen offline, but it's going to be it's going to take a lot longer. So I'm going to pause this video and I will catch up with you in a moment when this is all done. Okay, perfect. So I have all three of these files over here. Now I'm going to do one more thing, which isn't necessary, but it might be useful for him. Notice that I have my arranger blocks and I have some markers. Now these markers were just for me kind of tracking, but what I'd like to do is give him some breadcrumbs or, or some type of information in terms of some markers that make sense. So I'm going to, even if it's temporarily, I'm going to go, actually, you know what we'll do first? First of all, I'm going to save my work. So I'm going to go save this. And now I'm going to name this, rename this marker pre-count. And then here, I'm going to select all these blocks. And then if we go shift Y, we can enter a marker and we can name it at the same time. So I'm going to go to just zoom out a little bit. And we've got A here. I want to basically give him a marker that says what everything is. So I'm going to select this one, shift Y, and this will be B here, shift Y, that's going to be A. And then shift Y is going to be B. I'm going to edit this one. I happen to know that this is going to have a bass solo. So I'm going to enter that into the marker. And then this is going to be the full duration here. I already have markers here that's kind of telling what's happening with the dynamics. And then the last one, let's put a marker called outro. And let me change the end marker to here. All right. The last step, well, like I said, which you don't necessarily have to do, the last step that I'm going to take to add just a blank instrument track. So we will do that. And let's just zoom in a little bit. Now, because we have a cycle range or a loop range indicated, if I double click, it will automatically make the uh, instrument part the exact duration. I'm going to double click this again. And then I'm going to enter. Let's do, let's go like this. And then I'm just going to just keep doing this even even if it doesn't line up perfectly that's okay i just want to kind of fill this out so it has some note data or some actual midi information in this region now i'm going to go file i'm going to go save as and i'm going to navigate to the stems and i'm going to put this in the same folder and i'm going to do a dot mid and we will save that we'll choose use midi format and then i also do a dot midi just in case. So I'll give him both, which is, I guess, type zero and type one. And I'm going to put those both in here. And now we have everything that we need. Now from here, I don't really need this instrument track anymore. I could either remove this or leave it in there. It's not really harming anything. So I'll just leave it in there for now. So this is the basic workflow that I would take. And also worth noting that before I exported the stems, I would basically do just you know, a decent static mix that is hitting somewhere where I like to gain stage. 
And the idea is I have a VU meter set up to a minus 18 scale. I have the sensitivity pulled back quite a bit. And I basically go into the loudest part of the song. Let's go somewhere around here. But my average volume is bouncing somewhere around zero. And you don't have to do this. You could simply pull down the fader or you could gain stage it however you want. I could give him a mix that goes right up to zero. But ideally, what I would like to do and what I will send him in a readme is basically say, hey, line up those three stems in your session, starting at bar one, it's at 3-4 time, it's in the key of G minor at 66 BPM. And then if you want, use the MIDI file to generate markers. If you don't want, and I'll, I can just tell you the times of where I want you to play, then essentially he is going to set his recording level against those tracks, probably with his fader at zero. And then I'm going to ask him to export just a mono raw region and send that back to me. And then I'm going to bring that into this session and then I'm going to continue working from there. So that is step two. That is after I've done my pre-production and preparing stems and a tempo map and MIDI markers and things like that for another artist that's collaborating. And this particular artist is from Spain. So he'll be doing all of the recording on his end and he'll be sending it to me, at which point I will bring his track into my session. And then I will continue with any additional overdubs and any additional production that needs to be done. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll do my absolute best to get back to you. And as always, we will catch you in the next video. Cheers.